if you look just across my garden, that's the city of Auckland. There are no farms around. The closest farms are more than 100 miles away. And there's all these unused spaces. And there's all these people without jobs. I can't stop thinking that we can actually get good economies and be able to create like good careers out of places that people neglect. So this was sort of like one of the small prototypes. So in this case, I have fish tank and I bring the water up here and I irrigate it. I'm building aquaponic systems. Aquaponics is basically I'm gonna compost my fish waste. When it comes out of the fish, it's not available to plants. So it needs to get broken down into, into a form that plants can absorb and that's composting. And that's where the bacteria comes in. So we basically culture bacteria in an aquaponic system. I culture bacteria inside here and I grow like microgreens out of this. You can see the rest of them. So I have more nutrients. I'm creating more nutrients that I need. And so I then um, pass them on to this sort of same garden, but this is a raft where the plants are just growing basically on water. The idea is like trying to use local material to see if we can get more effective gardens. Not being able to use soil is really important, like here where we are, because this is West Auckland. Even though there's a lot of open space, it's really all contaminated because of just all industries and just roads and freeways and trains. In the middle of the train, in the middle of freeway, it really gets really bad just in terms of contamination. And that's why it's so bad until it has a number. So usually if you get those, it means something funky was going on here. So this is the kind of environment I'm farming in. This is the kind of environment. This is all I have. This is our future. This is how do we grow food in places with those kind of numbers. I have fish in a regular tank. So you can have any kind of fish, either ornament fish or edible fish. They poo and they pee. So in my case, I pump all that waste. I have a pump that's activated through gravity. That's when the water returns and it's high enough. The float switch is gonna kick in and the water comes out and pumps through the grid. So you can actually see the water coming out. That's all the water and all the Debris and all the fish waste basically gets spread around in the garden and irrigated on top. And all this is getting irrigated on its own gravel. So in this case, that's a high volume pump. It's gonna pump the water really quickly and fill it up in about a minute or two. You can see all the waters come to the top and then the pump's gonna stop and the water is gonna all drain back. That cycle, the pump pumps for minutes and it takes about 15 minutes to drain. So I'm pumping like about four minutes in an hour. And uh, really the whole idea is to expose the fish water to bacteria that I culture on the rocks. At the same time, it's also acting like an air pump. So that causes the bed to also breathe. So the bacteria that we culture on the rocks gets a lot of oxygen. The plants get a lot of oxygen on the roots. The plants grow off the fish waste. So between the bacteria and the plants, we create a filtration system for the fish and that's aquaponics. My company is called Kijani Grows. Kijani means grain in Swahili. Like the logo says, I'm basically trying to grow plants using fish in a recycling water system. The big, big advantages to me are there are no weeds. No weeds, really productive. I can grow a lot of plants in a very small place. I recycle my water, so I'm using very little water. I dig in a little bit and it gets wet. But see the top, it's completely dry. So there's very little evaporation because this is always dry. I attract no bugs, I attract no algae. But you just dig in a little bit and it gets all wet. So rocks do not retain water. So they're holding very little water. So basically what the plants don't use goes back to the fish. What the plant doesn't take, I put back. That's key for me. I come from a really dry place which is one of my biggest motivations to aquaponics. Then the other one is really having no soil. So I'm not tied to traditional farming methods. Not being able to use soil is really important, like here where we are. Underneath here, 
you go like a couple of feet, you can't even touch the groundwater because of a factory that was back here that was contaminating. It's easier for people to do like have parking lots or industry. So there really isn't a lot of open space. So this is corridor space outside a building things where nobody would really use but then it's very easy to turn it into productive land easily using this kind of technology. Generally plants grow roots that cross sideways to look for food and roots that go down to look for water. So you can only have so many plants in a certain place for them to be productive in nature. But here because our food is really already broken down it's almost like glucose it's like an intravenous trip. Plants don't have to work hard to get it. So the roots don't need to grow sideways. So I can actually park more plants in the same place. It takes a lot of effort. You see how I'm putting my hand in the gravel? You probably can't do this in soil. Now that they don't have to do that, they'll grow faster. So because I can have higher densities, that's why they say you can grow 10 times as many plants because all the food is in one place. This is the same thing as that one. In this case, I have a bigger fish tank. So because of a bigger fish tank, I can actually start going for edible fish. And because I can go for edible fish, I get another big advantage of an aquaponic system. Because now I'm getting two kinds of produce. Because people have smaller and smaller spaces, a lot of people don't have spaces. So we have to go to smaller gardens because they don't have the gravel and all that. And that's what this sort of little system is how do we create our filtration systems in buckets and really be able to grow food without the gravel so i'm raising duckweed and this is really high protein and fish food the fish really like to eat it i'm not a farmer i live in a in a, in a city farming and all this green stuff might be cool but the truth is if i wanted to be farmer i would have gone to train as a farmer a long time ago and i'm not that probably nasty but like we have like a warm bin here trying to raise our food like for fish I come from a robotics background it's really robotics and programming I use my computer for everything I use my phone for everything so there's no reason why we can't use the same technology for our gardening so this is sort of a little prototype I have I have my fish tank and the water comes in so in this case I have a physical filter made out of regular stuff. I have another filter made out of shells. Between the two, I make a mechanical filter and a biological filter. The hydroponic bed I have is a raft system. So the plants are just growing off water. So this is just a fish tank, a couple of buckets and, and just some water. And then the water goes around and these actually sensor with magnets that go inside and spin around as the water flows. So I can actually tell how fast my water is going. I have sensors inside that tell me, sensors all over, sensors that detect the level of the water. I have pH sensors, temperature sensors, and then I have a little prototyping circuit here. I have like a little micro based off an open source project Arduino and a Wi-Fi link. So basically this little garden gets an IP address and it's actually connected into the internet right now. And I have like relay cards that I can actually use to turn on the pumps and the lights and all that. Of course, solar panels and all that and battery because this is also completely off the grid. Now, the way I use my phone to communicate with this, if my garden was outside and I'm trying to access it, I can use, that's a QR code. My phone has a QR code reader and when it sees it, it opens up links that I can follow. In this case, it's a Twitter feed. So the garden is actually sending out uh, that if I follow, so I can see um, that I get the latest feed, which was about three hours ago, it's saying my tank, uh, in this case, it's complaining. My tank is not full. I think if we're going to get our kids to farm in the future and really want to be farmers and be able to take, to be able to, to control the environment properly, we have to arm them with, with proper technology. And it's been doing that for since five hours ago and I can go to the database and get more details. You know what my garden is sending tweets? My garden has own page on Facebook. You can program, you can spend your time actually using your computer and the technology around you to take care of your own basic needs. My water is not flowing and my tank is not full. It's really what's happening now. But basically what I'm saying is my garden is connecting through Android developer kit stuff. 
and it's connected to my card. And so I can basically, this way, like now there's an issue. And the issue is because I put my little test thing just to simulate that for you. So now the water is going to start flowing. So this will fix itself and this is sort of, it's you no know, a feature of gardening. And then I have another application inside here. So just about to be all computer driven. So these are about like three weeks old. So like I get more food than I can eat because every two weeks I get like food out of this. But now is it cheap? The problem with aquaponics is the initial cost. But then after that, the amount of food I get here is worth it. As for me, has already paid off. Even though my garden's been expensive, that's priceless. Because you always have fresh food. I always have fresh food. And all I do is I feed my fish. So I'm going to have like automatic feeding, automatic watering. All I have to do every day is basically come get my food, fresh microgreens every day. After about three years of trying to do this as a business and really not getting there yet, so I've been struggling. But the one thing I don't struggle at is on food. Don't let the light fool you. They don't usually come as green as that. Every day, part of my meal, either meal or part of my meal comes from my garden. It's brought back the connection that I had between food. I take pictures of almost every food I make. At least every day I take a picture of a food. So you see there's an omelette made out of just of mostly aquaponic food. I make very simple food and almost every food I make has a part of my garden in it. Why do you need all the um, automation? So you can be a farmer I mean, just so I don't kill my face. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm not a farmer. It's especially trying to grow your own food where you can say like I'm eating my own food every day. My food on my garden is not dependent on me. The other reason we're doing all this is so we can really arm the next generation. And the next generation, honestly, I don't see them having access to traditional farms. So we have to start arming them with technologies where they can actually go colonize, you know, places like in West Auckland where nobody would use rooftops. And we want to make them start thinking about them from when they're really kids. So as they use their computers, as they use their phone, as they write those little Hello World programs, to know that I can write Hello Garden programs, to know that, hey, you know what, I'm using my device to, to create food for me. I think that way gardening will go on. Gardening will, will have a place in the future, will have a place in the urban place. And all the gardens will be computer controlled, so you'll basically just be able to get to a website and just log in, feed the fish if you want, or see them being fed. Without using the internet as a forum, without getting an IP address, I really can't grow. I'll be left on this little street that nobody will know. But once I can put in sensors and get the gardens talking for themselves, what a better way to run yourself out of a job. But at least have a lot of food. <laughs> <laughs>